Hey everybody, Eric Hayden here in the shed today. Uh, the last video we did, we talked about improving the shed in terms of storage uh, capability. Um, I've always been lucky when we talked the last episode about having a dry space for storage. Here I've got a shed to store the fertilizer in and up in New York I had a, a garage. And the best I got uh, was these tubs free from Wegmans and I would store some fertilizer. But now that I'm stockpiling more uh, with the current health situation, I just like to get stuff when I can and not have to make as many trips to the fertilizer store uh, buying it in bulk. Um, these bins have been quite helpful. I mentioned on the next video I wanted to talk about another task I'm going to tackle. Don't know how this one's going to uh, work out. Uh, truth be told, I just organized this shelving unit. It still needs more organization. And kind of embarrassed to say, but ever since I've started, so this is probably... 2013, so going on seven years, I've kept my chemicals, fungicides, insecticides, miticides in this tub. It worked out well for me. Um, it was has a top that locks, so you can't smell the pesticides. I can now that the lid's off. So it kept it contained, um, it kept it away from things, and it kept it sealed. But I've done a terrible job in terms of keeping um, things the way they should be. So any bags got closed um, by hand, but you can see they still were open sometimes. For the most part, um, the stuff I used, it didn't, didn't really matter. Uh, the only thing that kind of got me was uh, iron. Um, I forget what it's called. It's a type of iron that I use. I'll have to put it in the comments below. Um, that got hard. It, it absorbed the water, hygroscopic. But everything else didn't seem to be really impacted by kind of storing it like this. At least it was cut off from um, the outside air. Um, liquids, of course, remained in their bottles. But you can see it's kind of mismatched. Um, and I've got the, you know, what I should use on top of it where I would have the label. So that was helpful having the original label and the original bottle. The... Uh, Measuring spoons and stuff were on top, and you can see that's residue from the chemicals, so that's not sanitary. So I, it's been bugging me for a while, and I just didn't know how to go about it. Um, technically, you should be storing some of this closer at room temperature, but I, I don't want this in my house. Our garage is super hot, um, so I never wanted it in an inside living space. And I talked about mason jars. I still may consider that with a tight lid and glass. Um, but for now, my wife has been saving these um, OxyClean containers. So we'll see how much they hold. I've got four of them here. The four dry um, chemicals that I usually use are fungicides, stuff like Captan, Clearies. Um, a third one would be Manzate. And then the fourth uh, dry one um, would be Tetrasan. That's a miticide. So from my memory, that's the four that I primarily use. So I'm gonna put those into the OxyClean, then organize the liquid bottles, clean all that out, and then probably put it on the shelf. We'll see how it looks. I looked at some of the big box stores. I could get a big, large um, locking cabinet. It looks real pretty, but for the amount I have, um, the lowest was like $100. I don't, I don't think it's worth it. I don't have young kids, so I'm not, worried about um, locking stuff up and keeping them away. So we're gonna give this a go. Um, I'm gonna start to organize this, see if I can get that organized into those. Um, one thing I'm a little worried about is the labeling. By the letter of the law, you're really supposed to keep this stuff in the original container with the label. And that makes sense because it has the caution on it, has the rate of application, it has a lot of good information. Sometimes you have to use common sense though. Um, keeping it in a bottle is one thing, but when you have a bag that's open and exposed, that's a safety hazard. So I'm going to try to do the best of both worlds. Anything that's in a bag that's a dry powder or granular, I'm going to seal it up in these containers, either transfer the label or print out a new label. Because unlike fertilizers where I can just mark, even though I have a label, still if I just put 0030, that's good enough. I really, really want the label with these fungicides because it's not good enough just to know that it's mansate. I really ought to know uh, how much per gallon, uh, any of the warnings or danger labels. I, I want everything on there the way it should be. So I'll either cut them out or more likely I'll print them out because I don't want something that's been a bag of residue 
um, lurking around. So I have to make some labels here down the road. So I'll get started and I'll let you know uh, how everything goes. I'm making pretty quick progress. Just within less than five minutes, I took most of the stuff I used out of the tub. Some of it's old and I have to dispose of. That's a good time to remember that your county or your local municipality will often do um, campaigns where you can get rid of old fuel, chemicals, paint, and stuff like that. So I'll wait for that. Most of my stuff I've used up because I bought it. Some stuff has been passed on down to me and it's old. Um, so I'll go ahead and probably dispose of that at one of those county functions. But just amazing that I just really didn't have all that much stuff in there. And that could fit in a much better spot on the shelf or on a shelf versus a big tub. Um, I like the idea of a closed container, but this should um, be eliminated with smaller closed containers instead of just one large one. Okay, the other point I want to show you is what happens when you don't properly store it. Stuff like Manzate, again, I closed the bag. It hasn't affected it at all. It looks just fine. Eliate, Eliate um, that is a fungicide for um, really, really good use if you ever get downy mildew. Look how clumpy that is. It is supposed to be more like that. Um, and so I've broken that up and put pieces into my tank and it's just a pain because it's absorbed moisture. Um, another one, Tetrasan, that has stayed dry. That is a miticide, uh, which is very good. So it almost looks like sprinkles and that has stayed the way it should. But the thing I want to point out is these bags are actually meant to be thrown in a tank, large tank, and they just break down. So if that um, if, you, if they get wet at all, it kind of dissolves in your hands. So that's another thing you want to keep dry. Through the years, I've been able to do that. But this Eliate is a good example of what happens if you don't store it properly. Uh, so I hope to do a little bit better job with that. I've gotten away with things because that is the only thing of all of these that has had an issue. Everything else has been in liquid form or smaller powdered form, and I haven't had an issue. I mentioned one of the advantages of storing it in the original container or packaging is you've got everything you need. What is it? The caution, danger label, um, what to do in case of an issue, how many pounds, um, the name of it. I was tempted to keep this material, um, cut it up as a label, much like I did uh, the fertilizer. Um, but I really don't want that on the outside of my packaging. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that away. I know by the letter of the law, you, you really should keep that stuff together. I'm going to go one step better, though. I'm going to keep it in these containers. Um, I mentioned that these are nice uh, containers. It holds three pounds, um, and they snap on top. So that's going to keep the moisture out. So none of the substance will be out of the container. Then I'm going to go ahead and print out the label or the information um, put it perhaps in a little baggie and attach it to the back. So I've got that information if I need it. Um, I'll continue to do this. I don't know how much more I'll get done today. Um, Captan, I'm kind of running low on that in Cleary's. And I found a really good deal um, with my friends up at Core Farm Supply in Smithfield. Uh, and I bought some much larger bags of that. Um, similar price, if not cheaper, five pound quantity uh, as what I was paying for um, a pound online, so really good stuff, but I need more containers. So I might leave that in its uh, original bag alone and continue to work through this smaller stuff until I get it organized. But just wanted to point out how well these containers are working. If you're gonna store it in smaller containers, you definitely want something that snaps and is very secure on top. And if you're concerned about the labeling, you can easily find those online print them out, leave it attached to the container. Therefore, you're satisfying, you know, having what it is, the danger uh, rating, everything with it. But then you're not taking the risk of, look how dirty this bag is. I, I don't want this on the outside. I want the chemicals to stay on the inside. All right, we're done organizing and getting rid of things. I'm not sure how happy I am. Well, I'm happy with the result. We got rid of the tub and I need to clean out the uh, measuring spoons. Um, and the lower two shelves of this are much more organized. Still need to work on this top two. Most of everything I have here are things I wanna keep. Uh, things like name tags for the roses, obviously gasoline. I've got some sprinkler heads that are not completely broken. Um, I'm still working on those. So the top two shelves um, I need to go through, but as far as the, what the video is about, the fungicides, the insecticides, miticides, 
Uh, they have all been organized, the dry ones into the larger containers. Liquids stayed in. Um, the part I'm not too sure yet, I just don't want to get into it. I still have some Clary's and Captan in the smaller containers that I ordered online. Once those are done, um, I need to save a couple more of these OxyCleans because this is a five pound Captan and a three pound Clary's. So if I get a couple more containers, I'll transfer that to the smaller container. Uh, but I don't want to open that bag yet because I don't need it. So it's turned uh, out pretty well. I put anything on the bottom, like my generic Roundup and my herbicides. I would never put those in a rose container or sprayer, but um, even keeping them on a different shelf is not a bad idea. So that's it for this video. How do you organize your chemicals? Um, curious if you folks have a locker or something more than just a shelving unit. Since it takes up one shelf, I may get rid of this whole thing and put some um, shelves on these two by fours, some L brackets, and keep this stuff up um, where I, I can only reach it. So that's another thought. I certainly could switch it to the top two shelves, um, but I, I don't think I need this whole contraption of shelving. I think I can get away with a couple shelves and using the vertical space of the um, shed. I think eventually, since these two are organized, clean this up and organize it and then say, hey, I need three shelves. I'll go ahead and put those in the corner of the shed and that way it's up out of the way and then this whole area here is opened up. So comment below, send me some pictures. I'd be curious what everybody else does in terms of their organizing chemicals, fungicides, uh, insecticides and the whole like.